Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another Wisdom Wednesday. So today um, I want to go over something that I think could share some some knowledge and wisdom with you guys. And it's about me. It's my story and where I started from, where I came from, uh, and where I am now. And the reason why I'm sharing it today of all days is because today is my actual birthday. Um, I was born May 30th, 1987, in Pomona County Hospital here in California uh, at 7.09 a.m. Now, from the time I was born to about the age of two to three, I don't remember much. Most people don't when they're babies. Um, but I do know that um, I didn't have a father. Uh, I had a stepfather, my biological father. To this day, I still don't know who he is. Um, he was never listed on the birth certificate. My mother has never given me anything to try to find him. I think, honestly, she has no idea. Um, so my mother and my stepfather were drug addicts. And I remember at times I would have to find food for myself at three, three years old. I would remember grabbing a chair, putting it near the, the counter, climbing up, finding anything I could eat. Um, it's interesting how some of those memories that you retain and, and remember of those things. Um, I was abused when I was uh, with them. Um, I actually um, have a six inch scar right here on my head um, from being abused, from being thrown into a wall. Um, I also have, um, I had a body cast that went from right above my ankles all the way up to about right here. Um, when I was being abused, um, I actually had my femur broken. Um, it was actually a spiral break. If you don't know what a spiral break is, it's where the bones are together like this and they twist and break. Um, so it was a spiral break that I had and since it was such a se severe break and I was so young and small, they had to put me in a full body cast. Um, I couldn't go to the bathroom on my own. I had to have assistance. So, you know, it was, it was pretty bad. Um, but I was taken in by my great aunt and uncle because of all of these allegations that were happening. So they, they removed me from the situation and they took care of me for, I would say four years about, um, because about seven, eight years old, I went back to live with my mom because technically she was still my mother and my parent or my, I call them my parents, my great aunt and uncle. Um, gave me, you know, they, they gave her another shot. They said, okay, look, we took care of him. You know, hey, you know, here, here you go. Here's another shot. Well, she was still with the same guy who abused me when I was younger. Um, and she actually ended up having two more kids. Uh, she had two kids with him, so I had two half-brothers. And um, I remember, there was one night, I remember sleeping on the couch because we lived in a you know, it was like a one-bedroom apartment. I, I think it was an apartment. It might have been like a motel or something. I don't remember the full details. I just remember sleeping on the couch. And I hear this cracking sound. And I wake up, and it's my little brother, Corey. And he's like three years old at the time, I think, three or four. And he would gotten into the fridge. He just learned how to open up the fridge. And he found all the eggs. And he was just throwing them on the floor, just cracking them on the floor, having a blast doing it. And I freaked out. I was like, oh no, we're going to get in trouble for this. So I, I got him back into his into his crib or whatever we had at the time for him into his bed. And I cleaned up the mess and I got everything cleaned up. And in the morning, uh, my stepfather came out and he was going to make breakfast. And he was really pissed off. He couldn't find the eggs. And, and uh, so I lied and covered up for my brother. And I said, oh, I got thirsty last night. And I opened the fridge and I accidentally dropped them all. And um, I told him I was sorry, but he ended up beating me for it. And, you know, my brother didn't get to get in trouble for it because I knew how abusive he was. And so I pr was protecting them from getting in trouble. And there was numerous times I had to protect them um, from him because he was that way. Now, I know since those times happened, um, he ended up getting full custody of them and taking care of them. And he became a much better father. Um, because people do learn from their mistakes, but at the time, yes, he was very abusive. He had anger problems, things like that. 
Um, but I don't hold anything against him to this day. I understand that uh, we all make mistakes as humans. Was it a traumatic experience? Yes. Was it, was it life altering? Yes. Um, those memories have stuck with me. But at the same time, I have learned to um, forgive him for what he did. Um, so, you know, he, uh, what happened eventually when I was living with him is my mom got arrested for stealing. She was working, I think she was working at like a 7-Eleven or something like that. And um, she, got, she got arrested for stealing money out of the cash register. The cash registers, the drop every night became light and they ended up catching up on it. And they found out that she was the one stealing one. She ended up going to jail. And uh, my brothers ended up going with this, the, the stepfather, which was actually their biological father. Um, and moving away and then I went back with my great aunt and uncle and eventually they adopted me that's why you'll sometimes refer when I talk about my parents I talk about them because ultimately they were my mother and father they were the ones that raised me they were the ones that taught me the values that I have you know things like that so you know they were there there to wipe my tears and wipe the blood from my scraped knees and things like that so I, I still consider them to this day my parents um, so um, but that, that's not everything. So I finally went back to live with them and I was getting back into school. And when I did live with them and from the time that I had the break and then going back with them all throughout the years that I went to school, I was bullied. I, I was made fun of, I was picked on. Um, at the time, my last name was Brooks. So my name was Christopher Brooks. And sometimes I know it's a silly name, but they call me Christmas books which is really weird, um, but that was one of the, the, the things that they would say to me. Um, you know, there was all kinds of mean things that kids say to each other, but um, I was different, you know. I, I, was, I was taught very early how to read and write and do things like that, so I had, you know, some intelligence. I wasn't like the brightest kid in the class, but I was very eager to learn, and, and sometimes I would try to answer every question and, Students, you know, kids make fun of that, you know, teacher's pet, oh, Mr. Know-it-all. And, you know, yes, I've learned to kind of reel that back a little bit and not be so like, oh, well, I know that and I know this and this is... The point is, is, is when you're eager and you're a kid, you have so much excitement, it's hard to regulate it. So I can understand where, you know, that, that might have been an issue at times, but, you know, it, it's still not acceptable to bully somebody over that or even just um i had a i have a, i have a lisp and i struggle with saying certain words without the lisp appearing um i mean you may not you may not have noticed it until right now when i pointed it out um but i was bullied um for that um i was bullied because whereas my my parents were well off as far as most people would say like oh they had good jobs and or my dad had a good job my mom stayed home but you know we had money but they didn't buy me the most expensive things my mom taught me the value of money very early and sometimes my clothes would come from the thrift store or we would go get um you know the cheapy brands because to be honest you don't need two hundred dollar nikes the, the point I'm trying to make is, is kids sometimes will make fun of me for the clothes that I wore because they would have a hole in it or they wouldn't be the name brand or something. You know, kids find all kinds of different ways to, to pick on somebody if they want. And a lot of it comes down to the psychology of just they tear other people down to make themselves feel better because maybe they're in a situation at home where they're being abused or bullied by their parents or their brothers or something like that. So it, it's, a, it's a cycle that happens and, and also a chain reaction that, you know, this person bullies them, so they're going to bully this person, and they're going to bully this person, and it just keeps going and going and going. Eventually, you have to cut that chain off and not be somebody who's going to bully somebody else because you've been bullied. So, yes, in grade school, uh, middle school, even high school, I was bullied. Um, you know, I played water polo, I played baseball, I did swimming, and, you know, in sports, there's really good athletes, there's good athletes, and then there's not so good athletes. And I think I was in the middle. I wasn't a great athlete, but I was good. I mean, I, I understood the fundamentals of the sports. I understood, you know, what I needed to do. But I wasn't like, 
Michael Jordan or Derek Jeter or anything like that. I wasn't exceptional, but I was good. I knew what to do, when to do it, but I wasn't the person that you relied on for that three-pointer buzzer beater. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I enjoyed playing sports. It was fun. Uh, we traveled a lot. Now, because of my dad working and my mom um, staying home and one of the things that I didn't tell you is they were much older than most people's parents. Um, when I was adopted, I believe my mom was in her 50s, probably late 50s, and my dad was in his late 40s. Um, so they were much older than most parents. And that doesn't exclude the fact that that's the reason why they didn't show up to the games. Or anything, is because, honestly, with bullying and other things that came about, I just didn't want them there to see me get bullied or something happen. And I built up walls and I built up these these ways of of being able to shield myself so that either A, it didn't look like it was affecting me, or B, I wouldn't be embarrassed by other people that I loved or knew seeing this happening. And um, it's a point I'm going to touch on later, but I wanted to explain that that's part of the reason why they didn't show up. It's not because they didn't want to come. I'm, I'm sure they probably wanted to come, but a lot of times I purposely didn't tell them when we had home games because the away games are different you know we travel from Reedley to Fresno because so I, I grew up in Reedley and went to you know Reedley middle schools Reedley grade schools and Reedley high school um, but the, the the fact of the matter is I, I purposely didn't tell them when we had home games now I told them when we had a game so that they knew that I was going to be home late but I didn't tell them where it was um, and they trusted me enough to be like okay yeah you find your own way home because eventually at 16, I had my own car. I would drive and do things. And, you know, they gave me the limitations of, hey, you can go out and do things. Just let us know when you're going to be home and things like that. But anyway, that's a whole different um, road to go down. But, you know, I started, I, I, I was bullied throughout school. You know, it was, it was a thing that I struggled with. I had friends. I had people that I could talk to. But I didn't, I didn't share a lot of it with them. Um, to some of you this that know me, this may be... A surprise to hear some of these things but um, in high school is when I started drinking I started experimenting with alcohol and drugs um, I started going into the party scene and you know hanging out and you know going and you know having bonfire parties or whatever house parties or whatever was going on but I also was in the church as well so it was, it was like this internal struggle that I kept having um, there would be times of turmoil where I'd be out partying and drinking and doing all these things that I shouldn't be doing and then there was times of peace where I would get back into church I would, I would find you know comfort there and I, I would I would be back with God and everything would be going good and then the devil would draw me back into those things and it was it was constant just struggle constant turmoil with all of that and it didn't stop once I got out of high school you know but at 16 I started working as an electrician uh, during my summer vacations and my um, winter breaks, anytime I had a break, I would try to work because um, I wanted to make money. I had to pay for my car. I had to pay, well, I, the car was paid for, but I had to pay for car insurance, gas. I wanted to go out and hang out with friends, you know, things like that. And you would think, oh well, you know, you were bullied in school. Okay, that stops eventually, right? No, I was bullied in the workplace too. I mean, I was bullied for being white. I was bullied for being young. I was bullied for my lisp my hobbies, you know, there's all kinds of different things that people will bully you for. And again, it relates back to the psychology of either they're being bullied themselves or they feel crappy about their life and they want to try to tear someone else down because the old saying, misery loves company. And there was one particular individual who worked there. Uh, I'm not going to say his name, but it was a much older individual. And while he was he was very smart and he knew what he was doing when it came to electrical and programming and things like that he had a very bad attitude about things and a lot of it I think had to do with his home life because I would hear him on the phone with his wife and and things would be happening and he'd be okay yeah, I'm sorry and I could hear her just screaming at him on the phone and then he'd get off the phone and then usually I could tell what kind of day we were gonna have based on what type of phone call he got from his wife and that's kind of a bad thing, but I mean, honestly, if you think about it, that can happen to anyone with anything. You know, you could be having a good day and then you get a phone call and it's like, you know, and you get some bad news and now your whole day just goes, 
down. But that's up to you ultimately what the type of attitude you want to have to approach things. But the point is, is, is a lot of the guys at work would bully him because he was different as well. He was very smart, but he was also very, the way he tried to do things is he was very aggressive and you do it my way or the highway type of mentality. And um, he was a, I, I believe he was in the army for a little bit. So he had a little bit of military background. Um, but when it came down to when it was just me and him at times, or sometimes we had some good conversation. He was, he was a, he was an okay human being to be around. He, he wasn't yelling at you or cussing at you or things like that. He was actually, he actually taught me some things. And I think a lot of it that he taught me was passive along with, with direct, you know, if there was direct things he taught me, like how to wire things, how to bend pipe correctly, how to do you know, technical things that can electri electrical, but he also taught me a lot of passive things that when I think back about my time with him, you know, passive things like don't be so angry with people. Don't be so, so um, short tempered with people. Don't be so quick to judge people. And it, it's interesting that you, even after you've not been around this person, I think it's been 10 years since the last time I saw him. I still think about things that happened between me and him, and I've learned a couple things past that point. But, you know, it, it, bullying doesn't just happen w one time in your life and then it's over with. It can happen all throughout your life, and I've had it happen all throughout my life. Now, I've learned how to deal with it pretty well. I've learned how to um, have a mentality to where, look, you're trying to bully me. I get it. You know, I understand you're probably feeling hurt somewhere. I empathize with you, but ultimately, you're the one that's got to fix that, not me. So you can keep attacking me all you want. It's not going to do anything to me because I've learned to accept the fact that what you're saying isn't true. And and you can you can try to hurt me to make yourself feel, self feel better, but it's not going to work. So I, I I wanted to talk about the bullying for sure, but also you know as as I was working there. I worked all the way up until I was probably 24, I want to say. I worked there a long time, 23, 24 years old. But alcohol became a very, very um, bad thing for me in that time. Like, uh, again, I fell away from from the Lord and all that. And, and, and again, it was always a constant struggle. I and mean, it always will be a constant struggle. But he, um, he ultimately got me, the devil, and, and I fell down a deep hole and fell into depression and other things and life wasn't going so well. I went, I got into some bad relationships and uh, I think it was about the age of 25 is when I hit rock bottom and I was using the alcohol to numb the pain and you know, other, other reasons. I mean, everyone has their different reasons why they use, but um, I think at 25 I hit rock bottom and it was one night, um, you know, I was out drinking and some things happened. And then I woke up the next morning and I had no idea on how I got home. Um, I'm not going to go into the details, but anyways, the point is, is I woke up and I realized this is not where I want my life to go. This is not how I want to be remembered if something were to happen. Like I need to make a change. And I started, I started journaling and I started writing a book, um, which I'm still working on to this day. Um, because it kind of got put to the back burner and life got crazy. It got, but it was a crazy good because I, I, I hit rock bottom and I decided to make a change. I decided, you know what? I ultimately need to get myself out of this. Yes, people can help me, but I have to be the one that wants the change. And eventually, you know, I got out of it. I got into a very good relationship. I've had a child since then. Uh, she's actually going to be turning four this year. Uh, which is cr crazy to think about um, because today I turned 31 and I've made a ton of radical changes in my life for the better. Um, I have gotten back with God, um, you know, and, and things have been good. Now, I'm not going to lie. There have been struggles. There have been things continuously happening in my life. Um, you know, I'm still being bullied. I'm still being, um, you know, slandered at times. And, you know, um, but also good things are happening. You know, we, our, our daughter is growing up <clears throat> excuse me, and she, we're teaching her things every day. We, we've been reading to her every night when she goes to bed. She's getting smarter every day. It's, it's a blessing to see how kids evolve 
and how they learn and to see <laughs> that at one time in life you were that way and you know I look back at the the past my past and I see all the things that went wrong and I try to make a difference for her and so you know there's times where yeah I am not the best father but other times I think I'm a pretty pretty good father at times so um, but yes I wanted to share my story with you guys I wanted you guys to see um, a little bit more about myself I know um, that you know some of the stuff may surprise you some of the stuff um, some of you have gone through you know some of you may have even um, harder struggle with your life past than I have um, but in the end what I want the message I want to convey to you guys in this is that no matter what happens in your life good or bad ultimately it's up to you to accept it and to either make a change if you want to or to make um, to make your attitude be like you know what this happened I'm gonna move on because it's very easy like I said I fell into depression it's very easy to to uh, wallow in pity and sorrow and feel bad and have all these these negative thoughts but that's not gonna get you anywhere you know I, I, I think of an old expression of, of worrying is like a rocking chair it's 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 a great thing to, it gives you something to do but it, you don't go anywhere and I feel like depression is very similar to that I think now, I'm not saying depression is, is something to take lightly. No, it's something that's, that's very, very real and happens to people. But ultimately, you have to realize that, yes, there are people that care for you, but ultimately you are the person that has to make that change. And you have to decide, you know what, I'm going to go outside and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Or I'm going to get up today and I'm going to do this. And it takes one step, one small step of just getting up and doing it because a lot of people don't take action a lot of people don't want to strive for greatness they like the idea of it but they don't like putting in the work for it and being great doesn't mean being famous it doesn't mean being you know a millionaire it mean it could be as simple as being the best dad in the world you know um, you could raise three kids and you know later on they're like dad you were the greatest you know thanks for showing me everything you did so like I said, everything is up to you. Everything is how you want to make it. Yes, bad things happen, good things happen, but it's up to you to decide if you're going to let it tear you down or if you're going to bring yourself up above it. I want to thank you guys for stopping by, watching the video if you've watched this long. Um, again, if you guys are being bullied, stand up for yourself. It, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things where sometimes it's not even meant to be bullying they're they're just they think that they're joshing with you they're having fun they're joking around and sometimes people don't realize that something that's not sensitive to them is sensitive to someone else and so if, if you think that it's not malicious just say hey you know I didn't appreciate that comment and a lot of times people will be like oh I'm sorry I didn't I didn't understand. I didn't realize that that was going to hurt your feelings and it's very easy to kind of nip it in the butt sometimes um, because you may feel like you're being bullied when actually you're not and whereas bullying is a real thing I'm not gonna take that away but sometimes people just don't mean to hurt feelings sometimes it just comes out wrong or they're not as sensitive to a subject as you are so <coughs> sorry my voice is kinda getting dry here so again I thank you for watching the video I thank you for stopping by if this helped you in any way give it a like um, if you think somebody can hear these words, it'll help inspire them. Share it off. Share it with, with as many people as you think can help them. You know, I, I'm doing this as a way to help you guys. Yes, it is about me, but it's to show you that no matter what, you can do what you want to do. You can make your life as great as you want it to be. So, again, I thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and God bless.